as you might have hoped, Team Red has pulled another one out of the bag. Good afternoon morning and welcome to Turbo Tortoise Tech. If you're new here, I'm Reese of the four piece variety, or we'll get triple XL. 7950X 3D. What a chip. What a clever idea from AMD as well to create a very, very simple solution to a seemingly complex problem. Uh, Intel did something a lot more refined and technical and sort of brilliant. And it's kind of speaks to the way that these two companies ethos are approaching the problem, which is basically the exact same problem of, well, let's get some power, but how efficiently can we get that power? And it's so weird because they behave completely differently to their wattage drawers uh, in the thinking of automotive. So the way I see AMD right now is they're sort of like a big old lazy V8, okay? Insane power. You gotta rev it though to get it to go. It sort of has like a startup time and then it goes. And when it's going, well, it's a big old V8. It's gonna have like significant power. Whereas the Intel is more of a high faluted European V12. Both of them have the same displacement. Both will use, actually the, hilariously, the V8 uses less fuel. It's one of the absolutely awesome things about these 3D chips is that um, they run, they just sip at the wattage plug compared to their Team Blue counterparts. But it, it always gives me that feeling when I'm using it of, you know, it's a bit slow to start, but then when it gets going, it's amazing. They're not very snappy, is the bullet point of the presentation, is how I find the AMD processors in general compared to having used 13 gen now for quite a bit. I've had my 13600K for quite a while on the test bench, and we've done a lot of different things with it, and to great success, it's been a fantastic chip, and it can draw absolutely ridiculous wattage, especially if you take that wattage limit off an XTU. It, 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 it's a thirsty boy. It doesn't sip at the plug lightly. It's Let's put it that way. These, on the other hand, give you all of that, but without the crazy wattage. And it's very impressive. And it's sort of surreal how the two brands have switched places because that was always the shtick with AMD was that it would just use a lot of wattage and run very hot, but give great performance. And then the Intel was the cool, calm and collected boy. Now they've completely switched places, which is sort of mind blowing. Anyway, let me give a short explanation as to what's going on with these chips. So what they are doing is they are splitting the dies on this into two separate parts. So you've got one set of eight cores and 16 threads on one side and another on the other side. So you've got, your, this is a 16 core processor, you've got the two cores split into two halves. On the one half, you've got your 3DB caching. On the other half, it's exactly the same as the 7950X. So it has both systems inside of one chip. So you get P cores and E cores like Intel, but without needing a scheduler. In this instance, the way you enable each side is with Xbox Game Bar. You just tell the OS that it's a game and then it will enable the 3DV cache. How simplistically clever is that? I really like that from AMD. The effect of this though is if you don't have the right drivers, you might get some very interesting results, which is basically what happened to me. And then I found out uh, luckily before you know, sending off the benchmark results that you needed a specific driver and a specific setup in order to get the most out of the chips. I, however, was unable to overclock them or do anything in Ryzen Master because unfortunately, this chipset is not reviewer uh, approved, let's put it that way. It's not an approved board. So it didn't get the experimental bias and stuff um, to be able to do a, a PBO and that kind of stuff on it. I've had absolutely no overclocking at all. Even Ryzen Master told me, get out of here, pal. So what you're gonna see is the out of box tested result, which is what I kind of like to do and then show potential overclocking after the fact anyway. So at least we can do that. So without further ado and any further gilding of lilies, let's talk about the test benches. So we have the 13600K test bench, which will be on your screen now. Z690 torpedo with that. We are using the exact same RAM in both systems. Two by 16 gig, 6,000 megahertz, A data XPG, CL40 timings for those. Storage is exactly the same as well. It's just the one TB SN570 from Western Digital, 480, 16 gig on the test bench. So we have got one of the fattest boy GPUs around. I really like that. I had access to that for this testing so we can see like what the potential, basically one of, if not the best, sort of level of gaming system you could hope to own uh, <laughs> with this large child over here. 
850 watt gold power supply, so more than enough wattage for all of the components built. And then on this side, we have the H100 cooler, but I used the LS520SC on the Intel because I know that that is a hotter boy and that it thermal throttled harder on this cooler. Because what I wanted to do as well was show the maximum potential of 13600K because it's not quite a 3900K. It would lose in areas in gaming in 5 to 10%, which we saw in my 13th gen review and a bunch of other reviews. So what I wanted to do was overclock the absolute snot out of that, get the absolute best performance I could, and then see how the, it compared with the 7950X. And basically, the bullet points of that, as far as gaming goes, is it doesn't. It absolutely gets destroyed. If we look at stuff, especially like CSGO, for instance, there's just no real comparison between those two, is there? And the very big takeaway from this is those 1% lows. In all but two titles, I think, the 1% lows were better from the 7950X 3D. So that V-Cache is working. It is doing a hell of a good job to get the information to the chip with the lowest latency. Clearly, this is exactly what it's doing based on these performance results. In some areas as well, the average frame rate increased by like a lot. This is with the exact same storage RAM and graphics card. Power supply even, I mean, they're both 850 watt golds. There's nothing really to call between the two that the one wouldn't have had power over the other. Especially if you look at like my five strike results and stuff, you'll notice that the uh, 13600K got a little bit warm. I saw it hitting 80 degrees in my gaming test because of unlimiting that wattage and clocking it to 5.4 gigahertz on the B cores. It would hit heavy, heavy temperatures and fan curve. Whereas on this side, I didn't hear it once during a single gaming benchmark, not once. I think that my average temperature amongst these tests was high 50s, low 60s. It's so one of the really big takeaways from the 3D chips is the TDP is 120 watts. The max I saw from this was 160, which is basically almost exactly in line with AMD's expectations and specifications. So yeah, they performed exactly sort of as diagnosed. But now those gaps that you're seeing between the 13600K and this with the exact same graphics card are massively different. So what does that infer with the 13900K? Even though I don't have access to it, there are a couple of benchmarks out and I'm seeing that in general, for the majority of testing, they are superior. This is better than a 13900K. Multi-threaded, not so much because it's got that split two layer CCD that one's doing V caching, which has to have a lower clock speed for it to work. And the other side is then standard. So you're getting the best of both worlds effectively. 34,000 on the Cinebench score is very much in line with the 7950X at 38,000 and the 3900K, albeit with significantly less wattage and a lot less temperature. Um, the 7950K almost blew the doors off the 240 that I had connected to it. So this contains and holds itself together so much better under that sort of load. But what's beautiful about this is you, like I said, are getting the best of both worlds. You don't have to choose now between gaming and multi-threaded. You could put it all into one chip so that because of that split, you've basically got two processors on one die more than it is one unified processor because they act independently like that. Um, the other uh, uh, effect of this is it's going to be really good for gaming and streaming at the same time because you can send your game down the vCache and then you can send your stream down the other side of the chip. I'd love to know what the performance and stuff from doing that would be like running a one PC stream. I would have loved to have been able to test live software and all that kind of stuff. Actually, underneath here is just the 7900 non-X right now. I had to take the 7950X back or X3D back to UTEC because it's the only one in the country. This is the bad news right now is that we're only going to see mass stock sometime towards the end of March, about a month from now. Yes, I'm too perplexed at this and a bit sad. There's just not enough allocation. I think there were already people pre-ordering because of the 5800X3D's successes um, and that were looking for getting extra cores and stuff. So there's just not enough stock, unfortunately, for South Africa. So even as cool as this chip is, as, is, as good as the performance is, as you've seen, you're just not going to have access to it. Now, there are some anomalies in the data, like you might have seen single core performance from Cinebench just being a little bit sort of underwhelming over there. That's because it's, Cinebench is not like a task that benefits from that caching system. But the games clearly show significant benefits. I mean, literally every single game out of the gate. Even stuff that hasn't had a chance to really run with NVIDIA DLSS, like Cyberpunk, it's still better. Even when you resolution scale, it's still better. So this is the, unequivocally for me now, the best gaming chip 
and especially crossover working chip you can buy, pricing is going to be a bit steep. So there'll be 7900X3Ds and 7800X3Ds, which will be, you know, coming out along with the lineup. So you, you, if you're just gaming, you're probably going to want to get a 7800X3D. The DDR5 pricing as well came down significantly. I mean, it's like 500 to 1000 Rand more over their DDR4 counterparts. And so on scale, it's not that much more expensive. So overall, do I like it? I absolutely love it. This is the best gaming chip. If you're buying a premium gaming system, it's the best. Not just because of that performance, because of how controlled that performance is, because of that simple pathing that you can split up. If you want an app to go through 3D cache, you just tell Xbox Game Bar to treat that app as a game and it'll do that automatically for you. So they took a built-in Windows function and managed to get the chip behavior to go in line with that instead of you know, building an entire you know, kernel and stuff around it. They were just like, oh, we'll just get it to function like this. I, I love AMD for this, like quick, easy solutions to problems, like Fidelity FX is another one that's actually amazing in games. Often, um, it makes like a huge difference to the sharpness and feel of the game. So I've just, AMD, you guys are very clever, clearly. And Team Blue, you know, that refinement is there. They feel incredible. I've got to say, overall on a usage, like everyday feel sort of style, I actually love 13 Gen. I, I have been pretty much in love with that chip since launch. But in gaming, you all got problems and it's called 3D caching. And until you come up with a solution that's as good as that, that can produce that much performance per watt and that much IPC gain. So Intel, I, I don't, yo, tough, rough one. This is very good. We'll have to see if these 3DV caches will make it into the notebooks areas because I think that's a low hanging fruit for them because of their performance per watt. MD, please, bro, like, let's see this in a mobile product as well. However, for this review, for the 3D cache, 10 out of 10, balloon bend the flower pot, man. Nothing else really to say. It was a good time. For those who gave me suggestions and stuff on social, I apologize for not getting to those. I only got access to the driver on Saturday afternoon, the one that I actually needed. So I had to then redo everything between Sunday and then get the chip back to Utec on Monday morning. So I do apologize for that, um, for that delay. But at least I got you some reliable data with some game breaking games, I hope. So if you have enjoyed this review, then please do hit us up with a like and subscribe. And I will see you on the flip side. <laughs>